Hello and welcome to Middleware Friday for Friday, December 8th, 2017. This is episode 44. And today we're going to be talking about building Microsoft Flow Usage Dashboard in Power BI using the Office 365 security and audit data. So just a reminder that this is community content and the views expressed here are my own. So what I want to talk about is an extension of something I recently published on the Flow blog. And that was the ability to access security and compliance center logs from Microsoft Flow. Now in this blog post, I talk about three different ways where you can access this data. So one is through the Office 365 Management Activity API. Another is the PowerShell Unified Audit Log Commandlet. And lastly, there's a PowerShell web service where we can go ahead and call this operation to pull out logs related to flow. So this is the data set that we're really talking about. Um, if you go to the Office 365 Security and Compliance Center, you can go ahead and search on different activities. Here I've chosen to search on flow, and I can see all of the related activities to flow. Uh, for example, when a flow has been created or when a flow has been edited. Go ahead and see who the user was that created those flows and get a timestamp. We can also drill down and get some more information about that specific audit event. Now, probably the most interesting data attribute that's in here is the flow connector names. In this case, we've got a request and we've got service now as the connector. So this is something that comes up a fair bit from different customers. They want to understand what users are doing within their flow environment. So who's creating flows? and certainly what connectors are being used. Now, part of this is related to setting a data loss prevention or DLP strategy to ensure that the correct strategies are in place and that users are connecting or wiring up their flows using the proper data sources that have been sanctioned by the organization. Also, we've seen customers that want to understand this. They want to understand which users are using flow so that they can better enable them. So they're using it more of a change management tool where they can then follow up with those end users to ensure that they are achieving the desired business outcomes that they set forth on. Now, accessing this information from the Office 365 Security Compliance Center is great, but it's only great if you actually action it. If it's not actionable, all it does is it sits there and collects and it's really just a waste of storage. So how can we actually put some action behind some of this information? And also, how can we go ahead and share this information so that it doesn't live in a silo and that other parts of the organization have access to this information as well? So as part of this, we've released some templates. And the one that we're going to focus on today is really the admin get list of new flows. Uh, previously, I did talk about how you can get notified when new connectors are deployed in your environment, and that's using the flow management connector. And then on the far right hand side here, we have also getting a list of edited flows, which also might be a useful scenario for you as well. So in the actual, in the flow portal, so flow.microsoft.com, you go ahead and do a search within the templates and just type in admin. You'll see some of these admin templates um, that we've recently lit up and you can expect to see more here in the future as well. So let's go ahead and click on the admin get list of new flows. And this is the template that I did recently publish. Now there is a, a complimentary blog post with this where I go through in a lot of detail how this flow works. So I'm going to skip over some of the details and I'll leave you with that resource for further follow up. But I am going to show you how we can actually tune this or tweak this in order to have this information published to a Power BI dashboard. Now, in order to get this template to work, uh, there are a few values that you do need to provide here. Uh, certainly, you can change the frequency in which this flow will run. I've set it for a day, so every day, I'm gonna go ahead and get any new flows that are, have been added to my tenant. I'm gonna be notified of that. Now, something you do have to add here is the credentials for the Office, Office 365 tenant admin, do that using basic authentication. Now, if you're not a big fan of the basic authentication, you can go ahead and use the PowerShell commandlet where you've got an interactive login. So here's the, the call that we're gonna make to this Office 365 PowerShell web service. We need to provide some 
parameters, so basically our start date and our end date, and we're dynamically determining those up here within some variables. And we're really using the start of the day uh, for the current day and then the future day by using the add days function that's here. Now once we have our list of new flows that have been created, we're going to go ahead and parse the response. And then what we need to do is we need to interrogate that response because we've got a node called audit details, which is really a node within a node for lack of a better term. And so we need to go ahead and be able to parse that. And then we can go ahead and construct a flow details array where we continue to add each of these flows um, into this array that we can go ahead and use for email output. Now, this is the, the core of the flow as it is today. You should be able to just pop in your credentials and an email address and have this basically spit out a report on a daily basis indicating any new connectors that have been created. So here's an example of the email output that you can expect. So it has the creation date time. It has the user that went ahead and created that flow. We also can see the connectors that were used. If it was, a, in this case, a request, HTTP inbound request and service now, we can see whether or not the flow was created successfully. We have a link that will take us over into the flow admin center where we have more details about the specific flow. We can see the flow name. We can also see where who it's been shared with. We can also assign additional permissions if we wish. In this case, the sharing permission means it's just been shared by itself. Now, certainly when you go ahead and create a flow, um, by default, you're gonna see that as being only um, shared with itself, not shared amongst other people. For more details around the different values here, I'll refer you back to that blog post. Now, this is great if you wanna look at this day by day, but it doesn't really give you a historical trend or, or view into the overall state of your environment. And that's really where we have the opportunity to build a Power BI dashboard. Now, in order to build the Power BI dashboard, we're gonna take advantage of a real-time streaming data set. Now, in order to create a real-time streaming data set, you're going to want to log into your Power BI service. So not desktop, but service. You're going to want to click on Workspaces. Then what you're going to want to do is you want to go ahead and click on Create here. There's going to be three options. There's an API, Azure Stream Analytics, or PubNub. So as you can imagine, we're going to choose the API approach um, in this case. Next, we need to construct essentially our schema for our data set. So we can go ahead and type in all of this different information, the different data types. And then what we see here is really our JSON contract that's being exposed. We do want to include the historical data analysis just so that we've got some history within our dashboard. We can then go ahead and head over back to flow. And I'm going to go through really just the areas that we need to change um, based on the template. So you can use that template as your starting point and then make the following tweaks. So we are going to go ahead and create a new variable and we're going to just call it initialize connectors array and it is going to be of type array and there's going to be no initial value. So we're just going to call it connectors because what you saw previously uh, when we were in the audit screen and we saw the connectors used, it was a, a comma delimited string that included all of the different connectors. We want to be able to split this apart because when we publish to Power BI, we want to ensure that we have them all individually, um, just so that we have a better chance to slice and dice this particular data set. Next, when we come down um, to the condition of whether or not there's data, we're gonna make some tweaks here as well. So what we do want to do is after we parse the audit details, so really what this is, is that JSON node within the JSON, we want to then be able to split that connectors use string. And that's where we're going to go ahead and use the array. And so what we're really going to do is we're just going to go ahead and split um, the flow connectors names field, and we're going to split it based upon a comma. And what this will do is for that specific flow that was created, we're now going to have an array that will contain an individual itemized list of each of the connectors that have been used. Now, what we want to do when we publish in this to Power BI, 
we want to include all of the other data for that flow when we push the connector with it. And that's what's going to happen here in our next step within the Power BI. Here what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to use the audit details and then what we're going to use is the individual item for the connector because we need to loop through this array and for each node in the array we're going to then go ahead and create a record for it. So you'll see that the creation time, the user ID, the result set, the result status, the flow details URL, the sharing permissions ID, those will be the same across each of these connectors because they're all part of the same flow. So really this is where uh, the whole sort of purpose of these changes is so that we can break apart that comma separated list and we'll create a record for each connector that's actually been used. And you'll see why this makes sense when we actually get to the Power BI dashboard. Yeah, so let's let's take a look. Um, here's the, the finished product of, of what I've created, but let's go ahead and jump into the Power BI dashboard. So here I'm in the Power BI service, so app.powerbi.com. I'm going to then select my data sets, which in this case it's going to be flow usage. So I'll just close this off. So here's my my blank slate, if you will, of uh, and I've got all of my data elements that we talked about previously are now showing up inside of this real time data table. Now it's just any of, like any other Power BI dashboard. So I can go ahead and grab a visualization, and then I can just simply go ahead and drag fields or select enable fields, and they will then show up in my particular table. If I want to go ahead and see which connectors are being used, I will then go ahead and create a pie chart. Now I can just go ahead and drag my connector over to these different fields. And this is where I will get some insight in terms of which connectors are being used within my environment. I can also go ahead and add some different cards if I want to go ahead and see how many users I have, I can go ahead and select user ID and then look for distinct and see how many users are there. So this is how you can go ahead and drag and drop and um, you know really come up with your, your dashboard. So here I'm in the actual report itself and uh, I've got the finished product. I can go ahead and filter on different users and I can go ahead and see what connectors uh, this particular user included in their flows you can see how many flows that that specific users have created and on the days that they went ahead and created some of these flows now if you're wondering how he managed to do this on november 30th it's because i was messing around with the flow management connector where you can actually automate the provisioning of flows so that's why that number is so high you can also go ahead and spe select specific connectors if i want to see how many flows involve the Azure AD connector? I can go ahead and do that. Or if I want to be interested in the mail, and I can see how many users and the actual users that created them as well. So I think this is provides some value, where as an admin, you get some real insight into how flow is being used. What are some of the features that they are using? Now do note, I am calling this connectors. Technically, it's really actions if you think about it, because we've got if statements in here and for each. Um, but connectors is, is more of the, the universal term. This will run every day. Any new flows that are created, we'll be able to pull those events out of the audit logs and actually include them in this dashboard. But that's not all. When we have Power BI dashboards, we also have the ability to set alerts. So if you didn't want to have that email digest all of the time, you can go ahead and leverage Power BI for those type of alerts. Now what you need to do though, is you need to have some sort of a KPI metric or a card in this case will work as well as part of your dashboard. So if you go ahead and add a, a card to the dashboard, so you can't pin the whole report, but if you pin just the visualization itself and you're in the dashboard, you'll then be able to click on the ellipsis and click on manage alerts. And here's where you'll be able to go ahead and create an alert for it. So you can provide a title and then you can, in this case, I was looking for the count of ID, which in this case was the distinct IDs or flow IDs that were are represented. And if we are above a threshold, then you can let I can get be 
I can get receive an alert, um, which I'll show you on, on the next slide, that'll give me some visibility into the events. So it's one of those things where I don't have to check on this thing every day, but if there are specific conditions that I'm interested in, I can get those notifications to my inbox. And here's an example of it. So in this case, the number of distinct flows is 116, which is above the threshold of zero. So pretty simple threshold here, but it was just really for illustrative purposes that you can still take advantage of the Power BI alerting capabilities on top of this actual dashboard. So that concludes this episode of Middleware Friday. I hope you find, found it useful. Uh, I think what's really interesting is we start to open up our platform and expose some of this telemetry to you is that you can really take advantage of the broader Microsoft ecosystem in order to build these types of dashboards really quickly. You know, previously in past years, it may take a significant investment in order to build something like that. But with the service, if you already have your Office 365 entitlement or you have uh, your organization has purchased Power BI licenses, you can go ahead and do this uh, really inexpensively. And it's obviously very powerful and now you'll have this data at your fingertips. So no longer is it just the Office 365 tenant admins that have access to this information. You can now actually share this with other parts of your organization. It could be other parts within IT. It could be your IT security group. It could be your change management group. It also could be within the business. So now that you've got business leaders that are trying to understand why IT spend is the way it is, now you actually have some metrics in terms of who in the business is actually using this technology and what are the, some of the things they're using it for and try to quantify some of that benefit. So Steph Jan will have next week, but we'll see you again shortly on Middleware Friday. And once again, thank you BizTalk360 for being a valued partner of the show.